Right now, let's get started. First, we welcome Sahira from Malaysia. She's also known as Sahira Stargazer in online communities. She is an artist, astronomer, and dark sky advocate in Malaysia, and she is also a member of the International Association of Astronomical Artists. So let's welcome Sahira. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so I'm Shahira. I'm from Malaysia. Thank you, we all you Lee, and also IDA for uh, inviting me as one of the speaker for this um, Under One Sky conference. It is truly an honor. So I will start my presentation without further ado. All right, um, so today I'll be talking about the significance of dark sky in works of art and from the past to the future and its importance in bringing light pollution awareness. The beauty of dark sky and its mysteries have captivated the imagination of astronomers, artists, poets, and musicians ever since the beginning of recorded time. The dark sky has guided humanity for centuries across space and time. The movement of the stars and planets that can be seen in the dark sky guided humans to do their earthly affairs. Before the presence of Ellen or um, light pollution, pristine dark sky is a dominant presence that encapsulates all humans. The sky was the calendar, the clock, the map to, uh, to guide humans uh, to the ancient people with little change over thousands of years. Um, we are gazing at the same sky as the people in the past, and which in turn connecting us to our ancestors. So what is art? The essential meaning of art is something that is created with imagination and skill that is beautiful or that expresses important ideas or feelings. And art is the expression of human skills and imaginations. Art is also imprint of our existence. When an empire collapses, they left their works of arts, sculptures, architectures, monuments, pictographs, petroglyphs, and so on, marking their existence during certain, during certain period of time to the future generations. And these works of art hold knowledge, connection, and emotional power. So what happened when dark sky and art intersect? The intersection between humans' fascination with the night sky and arts can be traced back from millennia, relating dark sky with the study of the stars. Astronomy and art has a long-standing profile relationship. Whenever I talk about dark sky, I will closely relate to astronomy. Through arts, we are able to learn how human of different cultures depict the stars and the significance of dark sky in their life. Pagans, ancient Greeks, Mayans, Egyptians, all cultures base around the stars as their nights are encapsulated by the dark sky. And each culture has their physical representation that reflects their connection with the dark sky. And this physical representation can be seen in multiple, multiple forms. So there are five major forms of art, which is a literature. The first one is literature, uh, um, including poetry, novels, folk folklores, legends, and myths. Meanwhile, visual arts, which is what I'm focusing on as well, is a painting, sculptures, pictographs, and petroglyphs. Music, you can find it in songs that you listen to every day, and performance, in dance, theater performances, in movies, and in architectures, which you can see from the past to the future, which are still standing up until today, that reflects humans' connection with the dark sky. Throughout the history, we are able to witness how the arts evolve in time as well as our connection to the dark night sky. The significance of dark sky, mainly embodied in astronomy, has its origin in the religious, mythological, cosmological, calendrical, astrological beliefs, and practices of prehistoric time. 
early cultures relating the night sky and the celestial objects in it with gods and spirits. And these objects and their movements are associated with phenomena such as rain, drought, seasons, and tides. Early astronomers are priests and shamans. Mm -hmm. Celestial objects um, and events are understood as manifestations of the divine. Ancient structure with possibly astronomical alignments like Stonehenge, Gosek Circle, Temple of Nadra, fulfill astronomical, religious, and social function. For history, this era can be divided into three parts, Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. However, meaningful arts um, that human produce can start to be seen in, uh, during Upper Paleolithic. Mm -hmm. Unlike modern humans, where the night sky is shrouded by reflected light pollution and artificial lights, the stars above dominated the worldview of prehistoric humans. As the night was the tapestry of their starry light, the meaning of which can only be discerned by their symbolic patterns. The ancient skies were of profound significance of the prehistoric humans to reproduce the night sky in their paintings, drawings, and architectures. Their works of art revolves around cave paintings, portable arts, carved bones with calendrical meaning. Meanwhile, their architectures consist of megalithic structures. For example, Hall of the Bulls in Lasho Cave Complex, the Stonehenge, Cossack Circle, and the Nebra Sky Disk. It is this symbolic language of sky became the primary interest to us, written by prehistoric man who adorned his underground cathedrals with stars, constellations, and symbolic representations of the solstice, solstice and equinox. During the ancient civilization, ancient cultures such as the Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Mayans, Chinese, Indians developed sophisticated systems of observing and interpreting the sky. In the ancient civilization, the sky is linked to the management of power. For example, Egyptian pharaohs considered themselves sons of God uh, sons of the sun god, even identified with him. Inca rulers claim to descend directly by the sun. Meanwhile, Augustus Caesar, appearance of a star, which is a comet, used by him to declare divinity of his father and him. And of course, at this time, works of art, mainly monumental architecture, came into play to establish cultural memory, assuring stability of the worldview and power, introduced in most cultures as an explicit representation of power. For example, the Mesopotamian boundary stone Kuduru and the Egyptian architectures that align with the celestials. So during the 9th to 13th century um, in the medieval period, I would highlight um, during Islamic golden age. Islamic world has entered its golden age known, uh, known as Islamic golden age and Islam practice relies on astronomy, the study of the skies for computing prayer times, determining direction of Mecca for prayers and establishing dates for holy festivals. Rulers erected great observatories. Meanwhile, astronomers and students from around the world use its sophisticated instruments. Art is an important element to signify humans further understanding of the night sky. Art is often an indicator of what a civilization, society, or individual takes to be valuable or telling. And the first precise star atlas, the Book of Fixed Stars, or known as Kitab Suwar al kawakib written and illustrated by Abdul Rahman al-Sufi, one of the most outstanding practical astronomer of the Middle Ages. The manuscript contain illustrated description, which is element of arts of 48 classical constellations discussed by Ptolemy in his, in his Almagest, and the text contained labeled illustrations of the constellations as viewed on a celestial globe. Besides that, in architecture, Huaysh Amra, or known as one of the desert palaces, had in one of the calderium or the base room, is covered by a dome decorated with signs of the zodiac. 
during early modern age, there's a boom of cartography, celestial cartographies. And throughout the Middle Ages up to 17th century, star maps continue, continually to be produced with more attention paid to the aesthetic aspect, not just scientific accuracy. Human invented the telescope for closer observations of the night sky, illustrated the observations, in return created more arts in the process. And there are also moon topographies. For example, we can see from Galileo Galilei Sidereus Natius. Besides recording his um, scientific observation of the moon, he also created artworks of it. So what are the role of, the, uh, of arts in navigating the night sky? There are a lot of roles of art that uh, came into play in helping us to understand further about the night sky, to appreciate the dark sky more, and to navigate ourselves. For example, uh, the first one is visualize natural phenomenon. As we can see in these images, the Great Comet of 1680 over Rotterdam and the Meteor of 1860 by Frederick Edwin Church. Without, uh, without these paintings, you won't be able to tell how does the uh, the natural phenomenon, the night sky phenomenon that happened back then, how does it really look like from the perspective of the ancient people, of the people in the past? And there are also more paintings of the comet during this time. And to record detailed observation, uh, such as like what I, I have mentioned just now by Sidereus, uh, by uh, Galileo Galileo in his Sidereus Nuncius, and also Leonardo da Vinci also produced this um, small artwork of the moon with, uh, uh, which uh, explained about the earth shine in his Codex Lachester. It is also to map the sky and surface of celestial bodies. As you can see here, a lot of artistic techniques are being used, artistic uh, art mediums being used to create this beautiful night sky related arts. This, uh, this is Selenographia uh, from Selenographia, the moon topography by Johann Sivelius and the sky map, the uh, sky, uh, celestial cartography, Harmonia Macrocosmica by Andres Solaris. And these are the prominent celestial cartographers from the Middle Age to the early modern age. Graham Al-Sufi, Johann Sivelius, Johann Bayer, Andres Solaris, and John Flamsteed. It is also, the arts is also used to simulate our place in the universe to further understand and visualize how uh, the astronomer understand and to find our place in the universe. They also use art to help themselves and also to help others to see um, the universe from their understanding, from their what uh, knowledge that they have gained. In this, uh, we can see from Orbium Planetarium by Andreas Solarius and also by Johann Gabriel Doppelmayer. There are also prominent celestial cartographers during this time. Art is also used to illustrate terrain environments in the outer space. Um, as we can see here, it, this is from the father of space art himself, which is uh, Saturn's view from its biggest moon by Chesley Bonestell. And this is from IAAA president, Aldo Spadoni, uh, entitled Trappist One Planetary, Planetary System. Art is also used to appreciate and expressing passion. Maybe some people, they don't really have much, uh, and they don't have deep knowledge in astronomy, but they still love and appreciate the dark sky. So they would love to uh, express it in forms of art. And this is what can, we can see in um, Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. And also another painting that is not as famous as Starry Night, but still has the same meaning, just starting out over the Rhone by van Gogh himself. Art is also um, play a role in preserving our heritage, our connection with the night sky. And in this, uh, in this case, how we uh, preserve our heritage through art is by preserving culture, stories about the sky that help humans find themselves, place themselves in a vast universe can be passed down by the younger gen uh, to the younger generation through art forms and practices. It is preserved through star laws, dances, 
simple songs and paintings, as you can see here um, in Javanese culture. We also can build intimate relations. Human also can express the intimate relationship. Art is an indicator of what society individual takes to be valued. So we create work of arts of what we love and fascinated at. Night sky related art forms are physical proof of humans connection with the night sky. It's also to tell stories of ancestors and legends. It is a visual language that can be understood by the observer regardless race. Even though we do not know the exact meaning or purpose of the art, we are able to understand the symbols that is represented in the art and the object of the object in the night sky. And it is also to share cultures. Art is a great way to share our culture with people from different race and feel connected to each other as we are representing this, representing the same sky in different art forms. So lastly, I would like to talk about the importance of art in bringing light pollution awareness. And in this case, I will be talking about in what uh, I have done as a dark sky artist. How fun, I mean. So um, in my perspective of what I have done before, the art um, has a um, very important role for me in bringing light pollution awareness and educating people about dark sky. It is to reimagine the dark sky in a personal perspective. I have my own personal perspective in how I look at the night sky. What do I think when I look at the night sky? What is my connection with the night sky? So from all those thoughts that playing in my head, I would love to express it in forms of art. So this is what I've done. This is one of the paintings called Lights Above Us. It depicts the Milky Way above and the earth, which is us below with the light pollution. And this light pollution, uh, trapping us from looking at the Milky Way. The Milky Way doesn't really, it, it's not affected by light pollution at all. We are affected by the light pollution. And this um, art also comes with, um, uh, with poems. Okay, so this one is uh, entitled Losing Touch. This is a painting of a three canvas I combine into one and uh, with a poem. I will read the poem um, for all of you. We are slowly losing touch with the stars sprinkled night sky, desperately trapped in the bubble of man-made lights. That river of light stretching across the night sky magnificently as we glorify those colorful artificial lights blinding us from the celestial abode. I am also um, combining different discipline of art, different form of arts with other artists as well to create a a, a bigger form of art um, to reach the audience, to reach people uh, about the beauty of dark sky and the importance of um, protecting the night sky from light pollution. And in this case, I work together with Sira Murali um, for his future uh, movie documentary. And this one, uh, the painting, I just give you a sneak peek of it. Uh, it is related to, of course, to the dark sky. And it will be the center point of the, of the uh, document. So uh, I had this photo shoot yesterday and I'm so glad that I am able, I am able to uh, show all of you today because I thought that I would get it uh, later than I thought. But yeah, this is the, the photo shoot I got for specifically for this, um, uh, for this project. And I would love, uh, I look for the place with a lot of nature around it to, to relate my connection, my, my personal connection with nature and also with the dark sky. I am also using art to build dark sky connection, not just for myself, but for the people, uh, for the people who ha maybe haven't really uh, get in touch with the uh, uh, with the fascinating uh, night sky. Maybe they would, uh, they are fascinated with the night sky, but they don't know how to connect themselves with it. So I show them a whole different way on how they can get to know more about what's out there, so that they will appreciate and would love to protect the dark sky more. 
So uh, in Malay, we have this uh, expression, uh, if we don't know things well enough, we won't love it well enough. Um, so for people to protect something, they would need to know what are they protecting. So this art is, a, is an excellent way because we are all, we can all be artists. We can all create works of art. It is in our nature. So that's why I am showing them Besides becoming a scientist, a researcher, what else can you do to express your passion towards the night sky and protect it, which is through arts. So I also had my exhibition. This is one of my initiatives to connect people with the night sky. It's, uh, this is my virtual exhibition, um, collaborating with, uh, with the National Planetarium. And also I uh, conducted talks um, so that uh, I am able to reach out more to people, explain not just my arts, maybe they can see the arts and look at uh, from their own perspective, but I'm pretty sure when people look at arts, they would also uh, love to know what are the um, opinions from the artists themselves. I also conducted um, a sketching session during uh, uh, Observe the Moon uh, Night, Oh, with NASA. Uh, this is with uh, Dark Sky Malaysia, but the Observe the Moon is uh, an, uh, a program conducted by, by NASA. So I have conducted this uh, sketching class with the uh, audience from Malaysia so that they get uh, to sketch the moon um, with scientific knowledge and also with correct techniques. One minute. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, one of the way is to um to get get heavily involved, actively involved with the science, uh, astronomy, dark sky, and art community. If you want to combine um your uh to to spice up your dark sky advocacy a bit, you would love uh yeah you would want to get into other discipline as well, uh so that you can you can uh, broaden your perspective and also, um, yeah, to make your dark sky advocacy even more interesting. That's it. That's all from me.